today we are working on a 1985 club car. This is the model that has the micro switch box and the solenoids with resistors to control the motor speed. In this video, we're going to be taking apart the micro switch box and showing you how to replace the individual micro switches. The accelerator box that has the micro switches is located in this box right here, which is underneath the driver's seat. And there's actually a lever that when you push the pedal down, it actually engages these micro switches. If you stick your hand up underneath the micro switch box, you can actually feel that lever moving back and forth just to make sure it's actually in operation. Sometimes by reaching your hand up underneath there and jiggling that lever, it actually will engage more of the speeds on these solenoids. Right now, the problem we have is we only have just the slow speed and we've tested out and found that we do have our other video, Club Car, how to diagnose your solenoids and micro switches might be one you want to take a look at to determine if it's actually your micro switches versus your solenoids that are bad. We go through a lot of detailed testing that you can do to do that without taking the micro switch box apart. We have no power coming to the second, third, and fourth solenoid coming from the micro switch box. We've actually jacked the cart up off the ground so that way when we engage the motor it actually spins the wheels but the cart won't move. If I go engage the gas pedal, that engages the slow speed which is solenoid number one. Now if I stick my hand up underneath the micro switch box and I jiggle that thing around, I can actually pick up another speed. So we're going to go and pull the micro switch box out and we'll see why it's not engaging these switches as well as we'll test the switches to see which ones of those are bad. Hey, we'll be back in a little over 60 seconds and we're going to pause real quick to see if you need any eternal repair. You might say eternal repair, what's that? Well, hey, consider your whole life, and all your life, have you ever told a lie before? I have, and I'm sure you have too. We all have. Also consider, have you ever stolen something, even no matter how small it was? I'm sure you have, and I have too. The whole point of where I'm going with this is those two rules, lying and stealing, those are two of the Ten Commandments in the Bible, which define what sin is. So if you've broken even one of those rules, no matter how small it was, that means you've sinned, and we all have. The punishment for sin is going to hell. Or eternal separation from God. The good news is Jesus Christ came to this earth. He didn't lie. He didn't steal. He didn't do all these crazy stuff that you and I have done. He was totally without sin. He was sacrificed on the cross for my personal sin and yours. He went to the grave. Three days later he defeated death and now he sits beside the Father in heaven. The whole point of why he had to take that punishment on the cross was he was taking the punishment for your sin and for my sin. But it can only be accounted to you if through faith you believe in who he was, what he did, you submit to him as your Lord and you repent. And when you do that, you can have eternal habitation with Jesus and the rest of the saints for eternity in heaven. You might be saying to yourself, hey, I'm a good person. Surely God wouldn't send me to hell for all the nice things I've done for people. But the truth of the matter is the Bible says, by grace you can save through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man or woman should boast. There is no amount of good work you can do to earn your righteousness before God. Only faith and trust in what Jesus has done for you on the cross. Hey, let's get back to our video and I'll have a little more information on the internal portion of this at the end of the video. To get access to the micro switch box, we're going to go ahead and remove this one battery so it clears out everything that's in the way. When you take the battery out, it's very important to make sure that you don't rotate the battery. The positive has to remain hooked up to the same terminal in the golf cart as it originally was. There's two nuts on the side of the micro switch box that have to come off. And then the box will slide sideways and we'll disconnect the accelerator. There's a cable ball on the side of the micro switch box. And this is probably one of the hardest things to get off. It actually has a sliding tube on the end of the cable. And if it's yours, it's like mine, it's probably gotten a little bit rusted up. But this collar right here slides back on the cable, which allows the ball to come out of the socket on the side of the retainer. The micro switch box has these two plastic caps on both ends that just pull off. We've got the micro switch box apart now, and I'll show you how it works. Is when this cable comes forward like that with the accelerator, there's basically just a plastic thing that slides through here and it engages each of those switches. The little silver armatures are the levers which engage the switch. You can see as the slider comes forward, it engages each micro switch in sequential order with each speed of the cart. You can see that the length on this plastic slider is different for each different speed of the cart. The problem that you could be having is you can see that over time, the bottom of that plastic slider ends up getting grooved when it's sliding back and forth on this aluminum box, which makes it drop down a little bit. 
And that's why when we stuck our hand underneath it, we were able to engage some of the speeds by just pushing up on the lever for the accelerator. You can see the looseness here of the slider switch. So in this case, it could possibly be that your micro switches are still good. However, the slider, you can see how it's kind of tilted down right there, it's actually gotten too worn on the bottom to engage the switches themselves. When you take the back cover off this micro switch box, now actually the slider will actually pull out the back side. Flipping it over now, you can actually see the groove that got cut down into the surface on here. Now you can see with the slider plate in place, it's actually tilted a little bit to the left there because of that ridge that's been cut into it. So when we lift it up and bring it back up to flat again, unfortunately this part is a little hard to come by. I don't know why they don't make it and it's an easy replacement. And instead they want you to buy the whole box, which is about two, three hundred dollars. The micro switches themselves inside the box, you can get aftermarket, you know, for twenty dollars or less. Here's my receipt where I paid twenty-four dollars and seventy-six cents for all five micro switches. So basically what you end up paying the two hundred dollars for is this piece and the metal housing. In some situations, your problems may be related to the slider bar inside the micro switch box, in which case you might, might want to take a look at our other video entitled Club Car, How to Repair Your Micro Switch Box Slider. So now I'm going to show you a creative way how to fix this. Your first thought is you might come and say, well, I could add some plastic or something to the this piece to raise it back up. But there's actually a lot easier way that you can do without even removing the micro switch box from the cart. When you push the bottom lever up, it raises the thing up and at which point if you slide these sticks underneath the slider plate, they can slide right down on either side of the lever arm. And then it moves smoothly with the wood sticks in place. You'll also be able to hear each of the five micro switches engage as you move the lever backwards and forwards. There's a very small nut that comes off this bolt right here, and then this bolt actually goes through all of the micro switches and out the other side. If you pull it out, then it will release all the micro switches inside. Now with the bolt out, now the micro switches will actually slide out the front side of this thing. These wires will just slide forward just like this, and all the switches will slide forward like that, and they'll come right out of this box. Now with the switches out, they'll actually separate. There's also a metal pin that runs through the front of these. And as you slide it out of the micro switches, then it separates all of them. On my cart, there's actually just two clips that pull off of each micro switch. There are some of these that actually have three clips. When you push the arm down, you can actually hear the button click. By setting your voltmeter to ohms and then hooking up both prongs to the micro switch, now when you push the lever on the micro switch, you'll read ohms every time. And this will tell you the micro switch is good. Sometimes when the micro switch has actually gone bad, you can notice that the button actually doesn't even pop out of the housing. Hey, as far as the internal portion I was talking about, if you're not sure you know who God is, I encourage you to just to pray like this. Say, Lord Jesus, if you were real and you were out there, I pray you would reveal yourself to me in a tangible way. And when you make that prayer, he's going to answer it and you will know he is real. At the point you know he is real and you're ready to accept him as your Lord and Savior, the gospel is so simple. All you have to do is just pray like this. Say, Lord Jesus, I recognize that you are the Son of God. You took the price for my personal sin on the cross. I surrender my will to your will as Lord of my life. I repent of my sin. Thank you for loving me, forgiving me, and accepting me into your eternal habitation. That's just how simple it is. But the catch is that just saying those words won't do anything for you, only unless the heart believes the words that you're speaking. For the Bible says in Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth Jesus Christ is Lord, which I just did, and you believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Salvation only comes through faith and believing. Hey, if you get a chance, visit our website, eternalrepair.com, where we have a lot more information about your walk with Jesus Christ. That's eternalrepair.com. Thanks for watching.